So as you can see, I've got the drive unit back in the subframe. Um, they're a bit of a nightmare to get in. Luckily, I've got my bracket that I made up to go on my engine stand um, that lifts it level. But what you've got to do when you lower it in, you actually have to tilt the drive unit. So this side goes in first. Um, so you've basically got to take the drive unit and bring it in on that angle, locate that down, and then lower the other side. Um, it's a bit fiddly. Uh, you've just got to be really careful of the 23 pin amp or connector over there so you don't damage it. I see a lot of these drive units with those damaged um, that we get in. So just be really careful when you lower them in if you do use a whole Tesla subframe. So the motor's in, drive shafts are now in. As you can see. So it's time to lower the ramp down to get it up into the bottom of the skyline. Fingers crossed it will fit. And we're in. Well, that's a nice sight. R32 oh, Skyline. Half an R32 Skyline, so not quite there yet. A nice Tesla Model S large drive unit. There it is. That's a large drive unit in the subframe, mounted in the back of an R32 Skyline. Looking at getting the main battery box in. As you can see, I've put some lifting points in relevant places. So hopefully we're gonna get that lifted up and in the front of the sky. And it fits. That was a bit of fun getting it in. A little bit of a scuffs and stuff, but it fits in pretty snug. Just need to build a nice cover for the top of it uh, and start getting everything plumbed in. Get the CCS connector, which is a fairly standardized connector uh, around Europe, uh, so you've got Type 2 on the top and then you've got your DCs on the bottom for fast charging. Um, this is the input on the Skyline. It looks like it's going to fit extremely well. Um, let's just get this held on up through the back. It looks like I've literally just got to shave off a tiny bit on the edges to slot it in. Um, and I'll still have clearance on the side for my lock pin to go in, uh, which is a safety precaution, it must be fitted. Let's give this a go then. Oh, it fits. Time to make a bit of a shroud, get it bolted in properly. So that's the cardboard template made to fit in the skyline. See, that'd be brilliant. Just gonna make it out of metal now and then put some bolts on the back of it and bolt it in. Quickly tacked in my plate, and we're just gonna do a quick test fit. Wee. Sorted. The plate is in, and I've seam sealed around it. To seal it all off and make it look a bit neater. Um, it's not perfect, but uh, for now it'll do the job. And then when it goes to paint shop, it can all be sanded and made to look absolutely perfect. Um, just going to show you around the back. As you can see, I welded the bolts on so they stick out. 
um, and they're sealed in place. Really difficult to see. Um, but it means I can just put nuts straight onto the back and it'll stay in place. Now we're going to start looking at the twin charger and high voltage junction box. Um, it's just a plastic watertight IP65 rated box, um, which I'll put all my high voltage connections in. And then I've got my two chargers, so I've got master and slave, um, and they'll have a control board fit to them, uh, which replaces the original Tesla one. And I'm just waiting for them to turn up. Basically just replace that board there uh, with a new one. And in theory, we should have 22 kilowatts, which is 32 amp, three phase of charging. Quick test fit of the uh, battery charger and high voltage junks, junction box mounting point. Uh, fits pretty much perfectly. And through now I'm working out my high voltage junction box. Um, so the plan is to have my motor feed here coming in. Um, I've got my 100 volt positive there, which will be from my chargers coming in. And I got my 30 amp positive out there, which will go to my DC to DC. And then my main power from the batteries will come in from the bottom uh, onto two buzz bars. It will connect up. This is the back of the skyline. Um, and yeah, it all fits. High voltage junction box, dual Tesla chargers. Just now I've got a lot of wiring fun uh, to get all this together. So our CCS connector with safety locking pin now fitted. Uh, it's all wired up and crimped in. Uh, I've got my two signal lines and my four cables for my safety locking pin. And it's on H07 32 amp three phase cable, which is six mil. Um, it's going to be fitted through there. I've put a large stuffing gland in the back to then run through to the chargers. The stuffing glands in, the cable is ran in with a nice little cable holder. So keep it up and neat out of the way. Now it's time to do the RCBOs in the little junction box to start supplying power to the chargers. Uh, also, that's now mounted in the front. Unfortunately, I damaged some of my sealed edge here as well. Obviously, it wasn't quite gone off when I painted it yesterday, so I'm going to have to uh, clean that up and reseal it. RCBO is fitted. Uh, i got to put a neutral bar and an earth bar on it at some point, as the box didn't come with them, so I've done it with a uh, uh, chop box for the minute, but that will change. Um, so as you can see, yeah, so we've got three RCBOs, um, L1, L2, L3 for the three phase coming in, and then each charger has live one, live one, live two, live two, live three, and then with these chargers, you actually need to put in a separate neutral to each one, which is why we use RCBOs because each RCBO has got its own neutral out. So it means I can do two neutrals out of that, two out of that, two out of that, two L1s out, two L1, two L2s out, two L3s out. So for each one, if you go for a single charger, you can just use this setup with a single to each one. It's just because we're going for dual charger on this, 22 kilowatts um, for testing. And then this, this car will will end up back down to one charger eventually because um, it's only got a 16 kilowatt volt pack. So it doesn't need 22 kilowatts of charging. 